Okay, what we're going to look at very quickly is the ecological footprint, what it is, uh, how we can increase it as a country transits from a low income to a high income country, as well as population growth. So you can have a look here at the components of an urban ecological footprint and an ecological footprint as well. So there's a few things if we look at its definition, but first of all, it's unit, just a reminder, it's global hectares per person, so it's an area of land and water, okay, so an area of land and water, our unit is global hectares per person, all right, so the area that we need to produce the resources that we consume and also absorb the waste, all right, now that's not just physical waste, that can also be our greenhouse gas emissions and, well, for this one here in particular, carbon dioxide, all right, so we need vegetation, plants to absorb this here. Given our current prevailing technology, because this changes as well, all right? So you can see the components here. You can see your carbon footprint would also require an area of land, right? So this depends on the level of economic development of a country as to how it is made up, right? So if you are eating a lot of meat, then you might require a lot more grazing land, for example, all right? So this changes depending on your economic status. Okay, so you can see here since the 1960s how the world's ecological footprint has increased drastically and the components of this, right? So we've got two or three main uh, changes here. So you can see the carbon or area of land to absorb our carbon basically has more than doubled, right? So you can look at industrialization, increased affluence, link that to manufacturing, vehicles, emissions, etc. Cropland population has clearly grown, so the demand for food has increased. So we've seen agribusiness as well. And you can actually see here in red built up land as we see more rural to urban migration and increased urbanization, right? So these are the components here. So as I said, we've got industrialization, population growth, so demand for food, increased rural to urban migration and urbanization as well, all right? So these are the reasons here for a huge increase. So we can look at where our top 10 countries and our bottom 10 countries are. Clearly there's a correlation between GDP per capita or wealth and the size of your ecological footprint here, all right? So we can see that Qatar, and if I just go back, top three would be your Middle Eastern wealthy nations have very high ecological footprints here. So a lot of construction, large vehicles, if anyone has been there, petrol is very, very cheap, diesel, oil is very, very cheap due to obviously it's natural geology. And so therefore we've got a lot of CO2 emissions. All right. If I do have a look here, opposite, if I look at my low income nations, basically Africa's countries here with a very low ecological footprint. I can look at where people are living. So rural areas, subsistence farming, many people may not own a vehicle, we might not have electricity, All right? So very, very low here. So there's a huge correlation between the economic development and ecological footprint as well. Now you can see here, we've got one earth basically, population continues to change so we divide the population by the area of land and water that we have and on average we have about 1.3 hectares per person okay so you can see here we've got an issue with our one earth and humanity's ecological footprint increasing so again population growth industrialization rural to urbanization and increased affluence and wealth so we've got a couple of scenarios here by 2030 Remember, 2030 is really important because that's the Paris Agreement. That's our SDG uh, goals as well in terms of a target here. Okay, so this is an issue if we continue like these countries here. Here's our correlation, positive relationship. So how can we increase, which is what we don't want to, but as I see economic transition, I might, as I industrialize, rely on fossil fuels, increase technology, import more. So I'm producing more waste. So I can have a meat-rich diet. What I can do really is reduce it by investing in public transport, renewable energy. I can recycle energy efficiency appliances. Don't really want to do this, but I can transport waste. I can use technology, so green revolution, intensify my land, locally grown food, meatless diet. Okay, and again, it's easy to calculate, and there are some limitations.